got both the James Webb Space Telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope spoiling us with the most incredible data and images right now. But it's only natural for us to think, what's next? NASA's next great observatory that's set to launch in 2026 is the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. Now, while JWST was heralded as the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope, because, you know, it could get very similar images to Hubble just for the fainter, more distant universe, there were a lot of major differences that completely set it apart from Hubble. Hubble looks at optical wavelengths, whereas JWST looks at infrared wavelengths. And to get the same resolution as Hubble at those longer wavelengths, JWST's mirror that, you know, collects and focuses the light down has to be a lot bigger than Hubble's, 6.5 meters as opposed to 2.4 meters. So comparatively, the two are really very different telescopes. And I don't think JWST can really be called the successor to Hubble. But the Roman Space Telescope, I think, can claim that. It's a similar wavelength range to Hubble, focusing on red and near-infrared light, and its mirror is even the same size as Hubble's. But Roman has been designed to look at a much bigger area of sky in a single observation. So its field of view is a hundred times bigger than Hubble's. So the images we'll get from Roman will be a hundred times bigger than the ones we get from Hubble, and yet they'll have the same amount of detail in them, which is why astronomers are so excited for this telescope to launch in 2026. So there's not long to wait now. So that was a very brief overview of Roman. In this video, we're gonna dive in further and chat first about who Nancy Grace Roman was and why the telescope is named after her. Then we'll chat about what Roman's main science goals are and what it's gonna study. And then finally, we'll chat about how it differs from ESA's Euclid Space Telescope, which was launched last year. But before we chat about all things Roman, I wanna take a minute to chat about our mental health because I don't know about anybody else, but I talk to my friends and family about everything. Like it just makes me feel better to like process my thoughts and feelings by talking about what's going on. But then something happened last year that I, I just didn't even want to tell them about, never mind talk to them about what I was going through because I didn't want to like burden them with all the stress and the worry that that knowledge would come with. And that wasn't good for me because then that meant that I didn't process any of the emotions or the thoughts that were going through my head at the time. And that's when I realized how useful talking to a therapist can be for your mental health. And that's what BetterHelp offers. This is a paid partnership with them. Like they make connecting with a therapist so easy and convenient, especially for those of us with busy lives. The platform is all online and your therapy is done remotely so you can do it from the safe space of your own home. By filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can connect you with a credentialed therapist in under 48 hours in most cases. In therapy, I was able to voice things that I needed to without the fear of burdening somebody that I love. So if any of that is sounding familiar to you, then give BetterHelp a go and, and just see if it helps. Look, there's a link in the video description to betterhelp.com forward slash Dr. Becky, which if you click, it not only supports this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month's therapy with BetterHelp. So thanks again to BetterHelp. And now let's chat about who Nancy Grace Roman was. Well, she was first and foremost an astronomer. She studied for a PhD during the 1940s at the University of Chicago. And in 1950, she published one of the most famous and highly cited astronomy papers of the 20th century, where she noticed that sun-like stars could be found in different places in the galaxy, depending on whether they were made from like pure hydrogen and helium or had more of the heavier elements in their atmosphere, which led us to working out how the Milky Way even formed and evolved to become like it is today. It was around this time that NASA was set up in 1958. And then a few months later, she was approached and asked if she knew anyone that would be interested in setting up a space astronomy program at NASA. And she took that question to mean, are you interested in doing this and put her own name forward so that by 1960, she was the very first chief of astronomy at NASA. 
Essentially, her job was to work out what projects NASA would fund for the benefit of the astronomy community, and then to convince other people in the astronomy community that those projects were worth doing, and then convince Congress to fund them. One of those projects that she was a major driving force behind was known as the Large Space Telescope, which eventually became the Hubble Space Telescope, leading to Rubin's nickname as the Mother of Hubble. So it seems only fitting that the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope and the next great observatory in NASA's space astronomy program is named after Nancy Grace Roman. Which brings me to what are Roman's main science goals and what will it study? Well, one of the main science goals for Rubin is to study dark energy. Dark energy is the name that we give to the thing that's causing the expansion rate of the universe to accelerate, but we still don't really understand it. To do this, Roman will make a 3D map of the universe, which is where its much bigger field of view will come in very handy. It will survey the sky, taking lots and lots of images and marking the positions of galaxies in those parts of the sky. But then Roman will also have a spectrograph on board, which will get you a spectrum from each of those galaxies. A spectrum is where you split the light to get a trace of how much light at each wavelength you have. And then using features in those spectra, you can track how much the light has been redshifted by the expansion of the universe. So then you can know which galaxies are closer to you and further away because the ones further away will have a much larger redshift to the light. That means you can then turn your two-dimensional map of galaxy positions into a three-dimensional map. Now, because light takes time to travel to us, we're seeing each of those galaxies as they were when the universe was much younger, billions of years ago. So that map also encodes how the expansion has changed with time as well. And so the hope is then from that, we can then work out what's actually causing this expansion, i.e. what dark energy actually is. Now, it's not just dark energy that Roman will focus on because it's similar to Hubble in design, but just with a larger field of view, we can still look at other galaxies and nebula with it. So nebula are star forming regions in our own galaxy. And we can this time see through the dust thanks to the fact that it looks in the infrared wavelengths of light. But Roman has also been designed to study exoplanets, planets orbiting other stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. Now its wide field of view is once again great for this because it means it'd be able to look at a large portion of the sky at one time as it looks for anything that changes. It will be looking for if anything briefly brightens in a technique called micro lensing. And it's estimated that Roman will discover thousands of exoplanets, including those that are perhaps free floating through space and not orbiting a star, or that are in much more distant orbits away from their stars, kind of like Neptune or Uranus, the other exoplanet detection methods miss. But the thing that people are most excited for is the coronagraph on board Roman. This is a device that can block the central light from the star that's like blindingly bright and instead reveal the faint amount of starlight that any planets in orbit around the star are reflecting so that we can see them and know that they're there. The Hubble Space Telescope also has a coronagraph, as do many ground-based telescopes as well. But the instruments on board Roman have been designed to give us much greater sensitivities than ever achieved by Hubble, which means we can then probe things that are way, way fainter than their star than Hubble ever could, meaning we can detect much fainter and therefore smaller planets. Now, the thing we won't be able to do with Roman, sadly, is to find Earth-like planets around Sun-like stars. We just don't have the technology and the sensitivity to do that just yet, but that's what's planned for the Habitable World Observatory, HWO, set to launch in the 2040s, which I made a video on last month. Check that out if you're interested. I'll link it in the video description below. But the idea is that Rome will be able to pave the way forward for the Habitable Worlds Observatory and help us refine that coronagraph technology further, especially since Roman will also have a spectrograph on board that'll be able to isolate the light that's reflected off the planet so that we can look for the signatures that molecules present in the exoplanet's atmosphere leave behind on that light so that we can work out what the atmosphere is made of and look and see if any of them are potentially habitable 
for life. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos on the European Space Agency's Euclid Space Telescope, which launched last year in 2023, you might be thinking that a lot of what I'm saying sounds very familiar because it's very similar to the plan for Euclid. So the next question is, how do these two telescopes actually differ? Because although there's no plan to study exoplanets for Euclid, the main science goal for Euclid is to study dark energy by making a 3D map of the universe. The description I like to use for this sort of survey that Euclid is doing to map all these positions of the galaxies is like getting the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, but for a third of the entire sky, at least the places where it's possible to do this because, you know, the stars in our own Milky Way flat plane aren't in the way. Which is what Roman will be doing as well, but there are some differences between the two telescopes that means they'll complement each other rather than competing to do the same thing. So while the field of view that the two telescopes have will be very similar, Euclid's mirror is about half the size of Roman's, which means it can't see the fainter, smaller, more distant galaxies like Roman can. But since Euclid is not bothering looking at exoplanets, its only focus is dark energy, Euclid is going to survey a much larger area of sky than Roman will. So Roman's map will eventually cover an area of 2,000 degrees squared, whereas Euclid will cover an area seven and a half times bigger at 15,000 degrees squared. So the map we'll get from Euclid will be much bigger, but it'll be shallower, so it won't go out to as great of a distance, whereas Roman's map will be smaller but deeper and it will probe those galaxies at much greater distances. So the two will be complementary to each other, filling in the gaps of each other's maps. So there you have it, NASA's next flagship mission is the Roman Space Telescope. Set to launch soon in 2026 and transform our understanding of what's causing the accelerated expansion of the universe and directly image a possibly habitable exoplanet in our galaxy. Roman, 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 keep Roman, 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 Roman. Now, while JWST was heralded, 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 heralded? Herald, it feels like there should be an extra syllable in there. Ooh. Why is my chair spinning like this again? I'm not moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm film all my videos like with my back to you guys apparently according to this chair. The floor might not be level, I guess. So the map we'll get from Euclid will be much bigger. Ooh, I can't. <laughs> so easily distracted. I'm so sorry. 